Hey guys, my name is Vanessa and welcome to Desert Rat Gardening. I am here to show you how you can garden in sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. I am in the Mojave Desert where the temperatures get well over 100 degrees every year, except for this year apparently. We are having the most amazing weather this year and I just wanted to take you on a little tour of my urban garden and show you what's possible. So here we are in my backyard. There's one of my little babies walking around. This is my old lady. Is she gonna come around the corner? She's blind and deaf and has dementia. This is Luna. <laughs> she just pretty much wanders around. She might lay down and sun herself today. Walking over here to the right. Uh, we just did all of this landscaping last September. So I had uh, our landscaper make us this retaining wall here so I could up my flower game this year. I have not paid as much attention to the flowers as needed, I think. So I'm trying to really attract the pollinators to my garden this year. But something that I've had planted over here for the past several years, uh, this plant right here this is Jerusalem artichokes, or also known as sunchokes. Um, you know, the roots kind of just stay in here and they pop up whenever they want. They usually pop up earlier in the year. Uh, they're late this year, but that's okay. Better late than never. So hopefully by the fall, we'll have some harvest for sunchokes. I also have uh, oregano right here. She's trying to make a comeback because this bed was pretty disturbed when we had all the landscaping done in September. But I have had this plant for, I think about seven years. So in September, this is when I planted this, this bed was in September. So these plants are still getting established. This is a pineapple guava. Uh, it's, the lady at the nursery sold this to me. She told me I could keep it small like a bush, but it does grow into a tree. I did get a few blossoms on it this year, but I don't think it's going to give me any fruit. I haven't seen any evidence of that thus far. Um, I did plant some Dusty Miller, just because I thought it was a super cool plant. And my friend told me, oh, that's going to get really big. And she was not kidding. It does make these really pretty yellow flowers, which... A lot of them have died off, so I have to deadhead those off today and maybe cut this back a little bit because she's real big. But I also planted some gladiolas this year, which you can see have died off. Um, so I'm gonna have to deadhead those as well. And I have a couple more gladiolas in the back that haven't put out flowers yet, but I do see them coming. So I can't wait for those to open. They're so pretty. Here's one that's still partway open. There's, the flowers are starting to die off back there, you can see, but there's still a little beauty left. And then behind her, or in front of her really, is my butterfly bush, which I saw this in some landscape at a gas station and I thought, oh my God, it's so pretty. So I had to have it. Have some lavender in there, more gladiolas. Um, don't hate me, I cannot remember what these vines are called. <laughs> but they make these really pretty, like, um, tangerine bell-shaped flowers. I do remember they're in the, um, I think the begonia family, it said, on my plant app. More lavender here. This is Texas sage. More Dusty Miller. I do have some Snapdragons kind of planted in there, but they're started to they're starting to peter out right now. Uh, I do have Hollyhock. This is my first Hollyhock that I started from seed. Um, I originally saw this on Roots and Refuge Garden on YouTube, and she's going to be a black Hollyhock. Uh, I was told it will not. Uh, start flowering until the next year so I'm excited to see her open up next year and then I have some 
succulents, my little succulent corner of the garden. Some of them are still getting established. Uh, some of them are struggling and some of them are doing well. This one's really happy. And then I have an Asian jasmine plant right here. And it is also getting established. So this water fountain was outside the house when we bought it. And my friend suggested, why don't you turn that into a little garden of sorts? So um, I did put succulents in here, but I have to say this part of my garden gets the most sun. It gets afternoon sun like crazy. And it may not be the best place for these. Because um, truth be told, I mean, look at these these succulents right here they're getting some sun and a little bit of shade and I think that is like the perfect place to have succulents because obviously she's thriving these guys over here they do okay but if we were having the hundred degree well over hundred degree temperatures that we usually have these things would be suffering a little bit they usually suffer in the summer a little herb garden here that I have um, it's overgrown, but this is lemon balm right here. And then I have parsley in the next one. I should probably cut all those way back so they can start regrowing. And then I did buy a green stalk last year. I, I bit the bullet and got one on a sale. And I have to say, I don't know how I feel about this green stalk yet. Um, I do like it. I think that my flowers have done the best in this container. Uh, I did put strawberries in there. You can see there's strawberries in here. Um, the strawberries have not given me anything this year. And I don't, I'm not sure if it's because they're new plants or if I'm not watering correctly or what the deal is. But the jury is still out on the green stalk. We're gonna start venturing out into the, the main garden area. This tree right here is my pomelo tree. I get a lot of questions, what is a pomelo tree? This is an Asian fruit primarily. It is a, I would, I, I usually say cousin, but it's basically an originator of the grapefruit. So the grapefruit was kind of derived from this tree right here, but Let's see if I can find, there's a fruit right there. That fruit right there, there's another one right there. These guys produce the sweetest tasting grapefruit style fruit you've ever had. Um, all of my friends fight over this harvest <laughs> when it comes about. Um, this tree blooms in March and the fruits are harvested right around November is when they're ready and they get really super big and they have a, quite a thick pith that you cut away and then the fruit inside is just super juicy and sweet, much sweeter than a conventional grapefruit. They're delicious. This is my orange tree. Yeah, I also have fruits on this year. Last year we had a really good harvest in this tree. Um, I'm still not sure exactly what the variety is. What my plant app told me, I don't believe that's what it is. <laughs> but um, all of these fruit trees that we have back here were already here when we bought the house seven years ago. But when I tell you I was taller than these trees, it's so crazy to see like on social media, your memories pop up and there's a picture of me where we're looking at the house, trying to decide if we want to buy it. And I'm taller than these trees, which is crazy to me now because they're so big. But um, the citrus trees do really well out here in the desert. The next fruit tree I have is my apricot tree. You can see she's a big girl also. <laughs> uh, I prune all of these trees myself, but I cannot quite get up to the top of that tree. So I just kind of let her go wild 
and take care of these lower branches. Um, all of the apricots have been harvested for the year. I've already made about three batches of jam and I might make some other things. I haven't decided if I'm gonna make some more jam yet, but I might. Uh, over here, I've just got some salvia and other flowers planted in a little planter. I've got some potatoes right here in this one. And in this one, I have okra that's getting established. Uh, I am from the south. I am from Alabama. And I grew up on okra. And we love okra. So I grow it every year. And it usually does pretty well. Um, here I have some herbs. I let a couple of them go to seed. This first one here was cilantro. Then the next one is dill. Um, if I can get my life together, I'm going to harvest those seeds and um, the dill should reseed itself actually, but I'm going to throw some seeds in there so it can hopefully start again. I have thyme and chives in this one. This is purple basil. And there's some more chives in this one, which I think is kind of funny because I had basil growing in here last year and all of a sudden I have chives pop up. Like I have no idea where they came from. Um, there's also some wild purslane growing in there and I just kind of let it, um, cause it's not really hurting anything. So moving on to the tomatoes. Down here I have Roma tomatoes primarily on this row. The, ro the tomatoes in these containers are also Romas. You can see I have some that are starting to turn color. I'm gonna come out back out here uh, at the end of the day and pick those. I also have um, a black crim tomato in here. You can see some of the tomatoes that are growing. Like, I am so excited for these tomatoes. They look absolutely beautiful. I have never grown this variety before but I'm super excited to try it. Oh, that's a beauty right there. I mean, these tomatoes are living their best life this year, um, considering the weather that we've had. We've had a lot of rain, um, <laughs> and I say a lot loosely because a lot of rain to us is like, you know, five inches a year. It's really not that much. Um, I also have it's called an opal tomato, which this is it right here. I think I do have a fruit developing in there somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. Oh, there it is. There she is right there. Opal tomato, also another one that I have not grown. Uh, I had a friend who's Bulgarian. He brought me some seeds back and said, here, try planting these. They're, you know, Bulgarian, Eastern European type tomatoes. So I'm excited to see what those are like. They're supposed to be like a nice medium red tomato. I start most of my tomatoes from um, seeds that I either get from Baker Creek or I get them from In My Gardener. Those are two favorites that I like to buy my seeds from. Uh, the Campari tomato, I did start from some um, store-bought tomatoes that I have bought, so we'll see if that one does anything. You never know. Right here, I've got some cherry tomatoes. Let me see. Cherry tomatoes, there is a little cluster there. I actually have quite a few clusters happening which is exciting. I'm gonna have a really good tomato season this year, which is um, different from years past, simply because there, there's been a lot of variables happening in, in my gardening that have um, changed for this year, so stay tuned. Uh, bear with me, it's hard to move in here <laughs> because I have this tomato right here this tomato plant is an absolute monster. You can see the purple tomatoes back there. This is called an indigo rose tomato. This plant has been absolutely 100% pro prolific. Um, she has spread out all over this bed. Um, once I can, 
me see if I can get a good shot of those right there. Okay, so these tomatoes are pretty much in full ripeness right now. I can probably um, harvest those this afternoon. Uh, so this is what you're looking for when you grow an indigo rose. Purple top, red bottom, full ripeness. These tomatoes do take um, up to 100 days or so to come into full fruition. Um, also, this is, I might have a couple more down there too. I should probably get off the ground. Um, I have never grown this variety, but I was told that it does do well out here. And as you can see, they were not lying. I just have tomatoes everywhere on this thing. And I am so excited. Um, so one of my tasks that I get to do today is you can see I've got you can see I've got vines from that indigo rose tomato they've grown all the way over here and they're obstructing my walkways so um, what I'm working on now is you can see my husband put up this um, handy little crossbar for me and I've got some string and I've woven it around one of the stems of the tomato so I can um, pick it up and get it off of all my other plants. It's kind of choking out um, some of my other plants that are in here. I have some Swiss chard growing. This plant was actually a volunteer plant that started growing out in my rocks and um, I picked it up and transplanted and it struggled for um, probably a couple of weeks but it's coming back now and it's doing pretty good. This is also another Swiss chard plant. This plant I've had planted since the fall and it's tried to go to seed um, a couple of times, but I just keep cutting them off and you know, they're growing back. The leaves are not as big as they were in the fall. Um, the leaves that I had in the fall were just absolutely monstrous, um, gorgeous. We ate a lot of Swiss chard over um, the fall and spring and it was really lovely. This is my row of squash right here. I am trying to grow a pumpkin this year. You can see I've um, trained her to go out this way uh, as to not clog anything up. Um, so far, I've only gotten a bunch of male flowers. I do not have any fruits forming yet. I'm not sure why. Um, I have also never grown pumpkin before, um, so we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I have another pot of potatoes growing right here. So this first squash that we're gonna come to is called a white scallop squash. Let's see if I can get a decent, okay. I have a fruit forming right there. So um, if you're familiar with patty pan squash, this is going to look similar to a patty pan squash, but it is white and they are super delicious. I have bought some a couple years ago from another gardener and it has quickly become one of my favorite squashes to eat. It's so nutty and delicious. You don't have to peel them. You just cube them up and throw them in the oven uh, with olive oil, salt, and pepper. And it's as easy as that. They're so good. So um, I have two plants of that growing this year. I don't think I have any fruits on that one right now. The next plant that I have is a gray zucchini. It's basically that zucchini that, it's like a lighter green and you find it primarily in the Mexican markets. Um, but there's one right there. You can see what it looks like. Um, I have to say I prefer this to the regular, you know, basic green squash, green zucchini that we grow. Um, I think it's really uh, a little more delicate. I'm not sure why, but um, I will be growing this one from here on out. Y'all can keep that green zucchini. And my last plant is a yellow crookneck, but it's an heirloom variety. So, um... 
The skin on it has like this bumpy texture. You can kind of see right there. Um, these plants have done really well this year. Um, I can't say that I've had like a humongous harvest, but it is given us enough fruit in the moment for us to not feel like super overwhelmed. Like we've been able to eat it all ourselves and it's been really nice to have that, that type of harvest where it's uh, manageable and you can eat everything that you're growing. Uh, this is another ochre plant that I have coming along quite nicely, I'd say. I can't wait for these guys to get going. They produce like crazy too. Here I have a banana pepper plant and it has also been producing um, quite well for me. I have quite a bit of fruit on there, probably a couple that I need to, yeah, this one definitely, this one is quite large. Yeah, I should take that one off today. Um, this is a new pepper for me right here. I got it from another grower in town. Um, it is called a Violet Sparkle Pepper. I've never heard of it. Um, I think it's kind of mild, but um, they're supposed to be purple, so I'm excited about that. They'll be really pretty. Um, I do have a couple fruits starting, as you can see. Um, this is a shishito pepper. She's been a little slow to get started, but she's getting going now. And I think I'm going to have some blooms soon. And then behind there, I have a poblano pepper right here, which has also been a little slow, but that's okay. Um, right here I have some, uh, these are Roma tomatoes. <laughs> They really just haven't done well. I'm, I'm not sure why. Um, they don't have a ton of fruit on them and they're starting to just really look crappy. I'm not sure why, but I will probably, um, once these fruits come along a little farther, I'll take them off and I'll probably pull these out and plant something else here because right now I feel like it's just a waste of space. So, Moving over to my little corner garden over here, I have my favorite tomato so far. It is called a bull's heart tomato. This tomato is a very large, like it'll fill up my hand, that's how big it is. Um, it's a super meaty tomato. It doesn't have a lot of, G, um, it doesn't have a lot of seeds or gel um, packs, pockets that are in there. Uh, which is totally cool. They are great for slicing, great for sandwiches. Uh, you can see I have some growing right here. This is a beauty. I put a, put a little net on it to hopefully kind of keep critters out of it. Every now and then I get uh, rats in my backyard. Not that a rat can't get through that because it could, but... Um, this would probably be better suited for like keeping the worms off of it from eating. I will say right now, there is a worm in here. I don't know where he is, but eventually I will find him. I've seen his poop droppings uh, here and there. The rain kind of washed them away the other day. Otherwise I would show you, but um, yeah, I've got a friend in here somewhere. And I will find you. You can see like all these blossoms that were on there have been chewed off. So yeah, he's, he's going to work in here a little bit, but there hasn't been the mass destruction that there could be. Uh, I have a couple more in here. There's a couple here. I've got several tomatoes growing on these plants this year and that's super cool. So just a little tip for you, when you have uh, the stem that comes off and it has the blossoms on it, uh, tomatoes are self-pollinating, but you can give them a little help by just kind of tapping them a little bit and it kind of um, moves the pollen around in there just to make sure that they get good pollination. I planted chamomile this year, um, another crop that I have never done, but it has just gone absolutely wild and so today I'm going to harvest 
uh, some of these flowers and dry them and maybe make, try making some tea with it. That might be really nice. But um, let me tell you, it has definitely worked for bringing the pollinators into my garden this year. This is a lacinato kale plant that I had it in my green stock before and it just was not doing well at all. So I thought, well, let me try to transplant it and it struggled for a minute, but it's, uh, it's definitely making a comeback and I might be able to harvest some of these leaves quite soon, actually. Um, I also planted a cucumber in here. Might not have been the best place for, for a cucumber because it's gonna, it's just spilling out all over this raised bed that I have. But, uh, let's see, as you can see, I've got a little friend in here that is chomping away at my leaves. I, ooh, is he right there? No. I don't know where he is either, but whatever. Um, something I saw this morning. I have a little fruit forming. This is a cucumber. It's called a dar, D-A-R, dar cucumber. Uh, I got the seeds from, I believe from Baker Creek. Um, it's supposed to be a, a smaller variety, which um, I kind of like the smaller ones. Uh, hoping that they'll be similar to like a Persian cucumber. Okay, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is a jungle over here. I have two other dark cucumbers that I planted down there. And I'm not sure even how well they're doing because I really can't see <laughs> in there. You can see my indigo rose tomato has come all the way over here also and is invading that space, of course. Um, yeah, I have some work to do out here today with picking up these tomato vines. They are absolutely crazy. Um, also in here, this plant right here, it's a delicata squash. Uh, I do not know if I'm going to be successful with that. I did see a fruit forming in there, but it looks like it is dying off. So that's really, uh, that's a shame, but such is life. And this is what happens in gardening. So we have to just keep moving on and hope that it makes another one for me and it's successful. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if I can show you. Underneath here, I have green beans that are growing. You really can't see them. I have a few green bean plants and I planted them under here because I knew that the squash and the cucumbers would come up over this A-frame and trellis and create some shade under there because uh, to be honest with you, I have not had great success with green beans simply because it gets so hot here that they just really peter out and can't take the heat. Um, so I was hoping that might be good, which, you know, it is successful. They are not giving me a ton of green beans right now. Plus, I, it's so hard for me to get in there, too. I can't even really see. But <laughs> they are giving me some. I have a handful inside the house. And uh, maybe I have enough to uh, make for a little snack or something. Um, this is a serrano pepper. Also being slow to start. But I just pinched off, like, like... I would say a week or two ago, I pinched it off again, and now it's just really taking off, going crazy. So we'll see with that one. This is honeydew watermelon that I planted. And again, I did take these seeds from a grocery store honeydew that I have bought, but um, they're taking off and they're doing well. And I don't quite like, I don't quite have any fruits forming yet, but stay tuned. I might soon. Uh, this is also these pretty flowers in here. This is nasturtium. Um, apparently this is an edible plant. You can eat the flowers and the petals. I did try it one time. I, I'm not really sure if I like it or not. Like it wasn't bad. It, to me, it kind of tastes, had a horseradishy kind of flavor to it. Um, I put it in some salad. Um, it was okay. I might try it again and see if I feel differently, but you know, 
Uh, this is a brimmer tomato that I got those seeds from Baker Creek. Um, I do have a couple fruits farming in there. It's kind of intertwined with my black creme tomato, so it's kind of hard to, to find the fruits. But um, let me see if I can get in this bed. You guys, look, I mean, my walkway, my walkways are crazy. And then, of course, I've got tomato right here in front of me blocking me. So i got to get those strung up today. This is black creme tomato. These tomatoes are absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait till those turn color. Let me see. Uh, yeah, right in there. Right in there. Those are some brimmer tomatoes. So they are making a little bit. Believe it or not, this is another um, cucumber in here. I don't know if she's doing anything because she's getting swallowed by my tomato. Uh, I do have an eggplant. Uh, can you see? It's hard for me to see. Yeah, she's making fruits for me too down there. That's a Japanese eggplant. And then um, I do have some white Japanese eggplant that this one does have a fruit on it. Can you see? Oh, she's, she's way down there. There's a little fruit coming out. So they're supposed to be like little, um, I don't know, silver dollar sized eggplants and they're white. And I haven't grown those either, but we're gonna see how those this is rosemary. Do. Uh, this is a very popular plant around here. It does very well in the desert. Drought tolerant. Super prolific. In the spring it has pretty little blue flowers on it and the bees love it. They go crazy for it. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much my desert garden. This is my, my full area back here. I also have a pomegranate tree here. You can see I have a few fruits on there. I'm actually hoping for not a, a not super big harvest this year. <laughs> I had a really big one last year and honestly, I can't handle it. It's like pomegranates are so much work to get the annuals out that I just don't have the time. But this thing is a beast. Like we have cut it back and cut it back and cut it back so many times. And you can see it's like not bothered at all. I also have a lemon tree. So funny story about this lemon tree. I've had it for a seven, seven or eight years. This girlfriend right here, she is riding the struggle bus. She's been transplanted probably at least three times, um, but she's holding on. She gave me three lemons last year and I think 11 lemons the year before, but you guys should have seen this. I'll have to try to pop up a, uh, a photograph of it, of, of the tree in the springtime when it had buds on it. This tree was absolutely loaded with lemon buds. I was so excited. I thought, oh God, maybe this year is the year. Well, let me assure you that the wind came through and blew every single one of them off. Like I don't have one single lemon on this tree and it is so incredibly sad. So I'm not sure... I'm not sure what to do about this tree. You know, I've tried to to baby her and treat her and all that stuff, but um, yeah, she doesn't get any bigger than this. I have been told that lemon trees are very temperamental, so I feel compelled to just hold on and keep trying, but I would say if something doesn't start happening in the next year or two, I might pull it out and buy a new one. We'll see. I don't know. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. 
because I love lemons. Like, if you know me, you know that I put lemon on almost everything that I eat because that's just, that's just how I do. But this is my space. Like, the Mojave Desert, it's super hard to grow here. I'm not going to lie. It is hard. It is challenging. But we don't have some of the challenges that other places do. Like, we don't have a problem with powdery mildew because we have, like, little to no humidity here. Um, for some strange reason... I've been experimenting with all the squash. Like, <laughs> I almost don't even want to say it. I'm going to jinx myself. I have no squash bugs right now this year. I planted all of these plants after Mother's Day this year. And so far, like, I had to come out here the other day with the shop vac and um, suck some squash bugs up that I did have. I have maybe, like, I don't know, 10 of them. But let me give you a couple of tips. So you can see I have some stakes that I was going to try to uh, vertically grow them this year, but no, that's not working out for me. But by having these stakes here, like those squash bugs crawled up those wooden stakes because they like wood for whatever reason. And I was able to just suck them up right off the, the wood stakes. So I would recommend that even if you don't grow them vertically here, put the wooden stakes there just so it's like an attractant for those guys. And that might help you out. Um, where's my friend? Where's my friend? Oh. I have so many of those lizards out here in my backyard. And it's really great because they eat bugs and stuff like that. And they're just super cute. But they startle me sometimes because they they frighten easily. And they, they'll dart across my... They'll dart across my wall and it scares the crap out of me. So <laughs> if you guys ever hear me screaming on my videos, it's either because a lizard scared me or a bee or some sort of scary bug has flown whizzing by my head and I will scream like a little girl and it's ridiculous. But it is possible to grow things here. I'm living proof of that. I never knew, I never knew in my wildest dreams that I would be a gardener and have this kind of garden and that I'm showing it to you and trying to teach you how to do it yourself. It's just amazing to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first garden tour here at Desert Rat Gardening. It's my little slice of heaven and this is this is my therapy it's my sanctuary i absolutely i'm sad when i can't come out here every day like all i want to do is spend time out here um the window is small in the garden because it gets so hot here in las vegas like you got a small window in the morning and a small window in the evening to come out here and get stuff done but it's worth it it's worth it <laughs>